Welcome to another episode of Galactic Ambassadors podcast. My name is Julia Balas coming to you from Ireland and today I'm joined by Sophia Das who is joining us from India as our recently certified quantum soul guidance practitioner. Welcome Sophia. How are you? Thank you. I'm very well. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. So we are recording this today on the 28th of September 2024 still within the surrounding energies of the equinox talking about the balance and everything that um, is important that comes with it. Um, yesterday, we published this beautiful video of the Soul Wisdom Circle, where balance was the team, and balance, we talked about how balance equals wisdom, and your name, Sophia, is connected to wisdom, right? Very much so, and I love that you're able to uh, capture the website name sophiaastrology.com such a brilliant name and such a beautiful website that I can't wait to share with the audience but before we dive deeper and learn about your story the highlight for me and the excitement is that you are you dive deeper into Vedic astrology but you also study tropical astrology and you have this very unique approach where you can bring the best out of both worlds so when you meet with your uh, clients that book their galactic astrology soul reading, how do you explain to them what your approach is? Would you like to start with that? Oh, of course. It's like you said, I, I do split my time between two worlds, sometimes in Australia, sometimes in India. And I thought I might do the same with astrology as well. <laughs> like I study Vedic astrology, and but my approach is Western. So First of all, I'm, I'm traveling here in India, so I thought I'd just come here to be with my family. But one thing led to another, and I'm really glad because I've been studying Vedic astrology for years. But since taking your course, Julia, I've started integrating more Western techniques into my practice. And what really excites me is speaking to a client's psychology first so they can relate to what I'm discussing on a personal level. Otherwise, it doesn't tend to settle. So my goal has always been to give people solid, actionable steps first that they can then use to create a real change in their lives. And the connection with psychology is undeniable. It's all about making astrology practical, right? Yes. Oh, I'm so, so glad to hear that this is your initial kind of motivation to, to really connect uh, the client to the information that is there. And especially for newbies to astrology or people who are sitting on the fence, whether they can trust it, whether it's real or like, what is it really about? And once they, you know, I've often hear people say, you know, how did you know that? Or how can you know so much about me? I just gave you uh, my date of birth. So I'm sure the experience is like that. Uh, in fact, I recall some of the comments from the client's feedback when you submitted your certification reports uh, mentioning you as a remarkable astrologer. I loved that feedback. So that's great. And then what happens next? Well, I'd like to rewind a little bit and sort of take you back to how my journey started. So I've basically been fascinated with space time since childhood and that's a weird thing to say but that's probably due to me being an Aquarius ascendant in in the Vedic astrology and um, growing up in India with a father who is actually a scientist I was exposed to both science and ancient wisdom quite early on I've been studying the Indian Vedic scriptures for over 14 years now and I love connecting those ancient insights with modern science especially quantum physics and for those who don't know, Vedic history is actually 5,000 years old. It's one of the most advanced civilizations ever, and it's contributed so much to fields like astronomy, medicine, mathematics. For example, the concept of zero, that came from ancient India. And that's how we, you know, connect the dots to singularity and the black holes and everything. And Vedic astrology, also called Jyotish, was essentially an ancient blend of spirituality and science, mapping out planetary movements and their influence in our lives. And they were talking about the universe being a hologra holographic or an illusion, or in Hindi we call it Maya, long before modern scientists sort of figured it out. So that's incredible. And this is where my passion really takes off. Wow, that's Amazing to hear about um, some of the insights into the Vedic. And as I am reviewing your natal chart, with your permission, I'll actually share your Vedic uh, galactic astrology chart. As you've mentioned, your um, ascendant in Aquarius. 
the connection to one of the most ancient philosophies and spiritual guidance which i'm so happy to see that also in your natal chart as your lunar nodes are connected to vega uh, lyra star especially your north node which i believe uh, the the vedic traditions may have their roots and origins in lyran human descendants or um, ancestors that that then so from lyra moved to vega uh, star system and then from Vega to Sirius and then from Sirius to Earth starting some of the actually, if not all spiritual traditions on Earth including yoga and astrology and all the spiritual practices so for you also having this in um, Sagittarius like I'm not surprised that you have this yearning and desire to explore the spiritual wisdom and guidance you actually had quite a journey just from reading your bio, where you traveled to the foothills of Himalayas and where else did your seeking for wisdom or pursuits of wisdom take you? Can you tell us a little bit about that? During my Saturn return, and every astrologer would be aware of this, <laughs> it's, it's not the greatest period. I was using astrology, actually, to start navigating really big life changes. I thought it was time to sort of use it in a practical way and make sure that I get on the right path. And this led me back to my heritage here in India, first to be with my family. But like I said before, like one thing just led to another. And I started to explore personal healing practices like Hatha Yoga, Kriya Yoga. And then I did Vipassana uh, in Ladakh as well and yoga in Rishikesh. And then I met with certain spiritual leaders like Sadhguru and the Dalai Lama in Dharamshala. So it just kind of snowballed after that. And um, while I was in Rishikesh, I also sort of like explored Ayurvedic practices like Panchakarma, which is quite intense. But it was not just for my own healing, but also to learn how I can use that to integrate these practices into astrology and help others heal too. So medical astrology has also kind of become big in my practice, which I'm really happy with. And now that I use astrology to help people understand and resolve their karmic patterns, I've seen that it's amazing how we can pinpoint root causes that travel with us through lifetimes within hours, while traditional therapy might take months or even years to do the same. Because once you understand the cause, there is a sense of acceptance, and I see that straight away in a client. And then you can sort of start to resolve anything, whether it's a pattern or it's an addiction or anything really. And karma is something that you can't really break free from unless you fully see it, unless it's on paper. And I feel like that's really helpful when it comes to comes to astrology, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Yes. I want to um, share the screen again and come back to your chart and also... So actually, I want to correct myself first, because the uh, conjunction to Vega is uh, linked to your natal Neptune. So your higher spiritual guidance is anchored in the ancient, ancient spiritual teachings and the ascended masters. And I'm not surprised at all that it actually even manifested for you through the experiences that you've mentioned, where you came and sat in a group, in a collective of the, the masters that uh, still walk among us and and um, experience that and actually even your ability which perhaps come from your south node in Gemini to that you're actually it's your nature to look at multiple different resources and teachings and combine them into almost like a hybrid synthesis of, of the best of the best and allowing your unique being to offer it in service to in a very unique way to whoever is guided to you. So I thought that's um, that's also a wonderful manifestation of your natal chart. Yeah, can I actually ask you, so when you first looked at the galactic astrology and your uh, connection to stars, was the Vega connection in any way significant or validating something to you? Which stars or nakshatras in reading terminology spoke to you the most? Yes, so Vega was definitely prominent because it's conjunct my Neptune and I was looking at my origin history as well as a soul. And Lyra and Vega are essentially, you know, the birthplaces of humanity itself, you know, our entire galactic simulation. So I was very proud to have such a strong lineage because 
What that did for me, Julia, is that it connected me straight to Regulus, my son, which is opposite. It's con- it, like it's opposite Regulus at the moment. So I was looking at that and I was like, it's very prominent in the seventh house. And I know that Regulus is also a star of the ancestors. And and I was like, I am here to work in the domain of relationships and human relationships and cultivating relationships. And this is something that my ancestors had chosen for me. And I really want to, and there's, it's loud and clear in my chart that this is the direction I'm meant to go in, in a healing capacity. And I also sort of consulted a few astrologers to make sure that I wasn't going crazy, that this was really my path because I come from a very corporate background and I didn't think that I was ever, ever going to end up as an astrologer. Yeah, so that's quite amazing. And what also stood out for me is the Alphard connection right there next to Regulus. Um, so uh, Alphard is the uh, brightest star in Hydra constellation. And so this is conjunct both your Jupiter and Venus. You were actually born on Venus-Jupiter conjunction, uh, both in Leo. So, you know, the most benefic, benefic planets um, shining their light together on your path uh, blessing all your relationships and how you connect uh, to relationships is just beautiful, natural elegance and charm and charisma uh, coming through here and sextiling your midheaven that's conjunct galactic center. I just feel it's such a fortunate, fortunate chart. And I feel so honored and blessed that you are guided to quantum soul guidance modality and that we can see you grow and shine as a, as one of our practitioners. And I'm certainly excited for people that may be guided to you and you know everything else that's that's still ahead of you and certainly the hydra connection uh, or the alphard star for me that always connects strongly to the magdalenes and the sophias and the hathors and that entire lineage which goes very well together with the uh, vega lineage the lyran so i presume or sense many incarnations of your soul previously being uh, devoted to the spiritual practices in support of collective evolution and perhaps this is why you may have earned uh, such a blessed uh, chart when you were born all these planets coming together to shine their light on you and certainly it's you know great responsibility comes with that and humility too um, i'm certainly not feeling like you know we're going to blast your ego as we say all these wonderful things but do you feel that resonance with the Sophia frequency, the Magdalene's, the Hathor, the Isis, or any other divine feminine embodiments? Would you like to comment on that? I certainly do. I feel like service to humanity is a big theme of my of my chart. Um, starting with the Aquarius ascendant, and then that heavy focus on the seventh house. It's like I couldn't have, I couldn't have not gone on this path um and sophia is actually my chosen name my birth name is something entirely different so we'll be um, there. Mm-hmm. yeah i feel like sophia is a name that chose me <laughs> very much more than i chose it and ever since i came came into that name i felt like it became more service to humanity than i ever could like i started to find more healing modalities and things like that that i never thought i would um so yeah there there is definitely a <laughs> cosmic um hand at play here for sure i can sense that too that's amazing um do you know what else stood out for me your sudden saturn conjunct out there opposing chiron in cancer and i feel you know with the Altair conjunct alignments, uh, especially with Saturn, uh, the themes of the ego's shadow side and transmuting the ego's shadow side. And when I see then opposing Chiron in Cancer, that that also may be one of your themes where you have this natural ability to see through the, the maybe the games or or the aspects of ego showing up uh, in relationships or true relationships and um, perhaps with greater capacity for compassion allowing that to be cleared and especially if it's coming through your 12th house maybe from some previous uh, lifetimes incarnations where it may have been extra difficult when dealing with the 
shadow side of ego, whether through other people's relationships or your own. Uh, but I feel in this lifetime, you may feel extra equipped to put, put that self-mastery of kind of transmuting um, these these aspects of relationships. Do you feel that you're, you're maybe quite strong? Uh, I know it's hard to speak um, really, um, not highly, but speak. It's funny, actually, it's maybe my, my own shadow thing uh, that I need to transmute. Like, it's not easy for me to speak well about us or speak good about our our qualities it's like we shouldn't you know like let's be humble but I, it really comes out as something that i want to highlight so i'm asking again so do you feel that's um that resonates uh, that's quite the story for you it does resonate and chiron is also in my sixth house which is mm -hmm. the house of service so i feel like all my blessings and my lessons have come through relationships and one of the big things about relationships is you can't not see another person's ego i mean everyone's show reflecting everyone's ego to each other so um and the fact that you know regulus is in my seventh house it's um close enough to chiron so i feel like my ascendant has a huge role to play in that one as well and i wrote about makab quite detailed in my blog essentially <laughs> makab is is one of those stars where a person becomes entirely empty devoid of self-identity and then sort of starts reflecting the other person's ego back to them and it's quite difficult for someone else to see themselves reflected in you and it either you love it or you hate it so it's always been a sort of a challenge for me to interact with people I don't know what they'll get out of it whether they'll <laughs> so it's kind of like rolling the dice there but um yeah so I completely resonate with that and yeah Cairo and the wounded healer so yeah, the service aspect keeps coming back, isn't it? It's like the sixth yeah. house. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you're mentioning Markab. I had a chance to read one of your blogs. Actually, I'm going to show your beautiful, beautiful website that is the labor of your own creation. Uh, and I would strongly, wholeheartedly encourage the viewers to take their time and go to sophiaastrology.com and explore the blog you have such a unique um, style of writing and you took time to uh, write articles that are so rich in information that is can be also practically applied. And certainly the star markup, which is conjunct my son. So your ascendant is on my uh, son um, and, and all the other stars that I had a chance to read about deep resonance. Like you, you are, you were able to express things that I knew about the stars in, in your very unique style of, of writing. And I love the art as well that you're choosing for each of these. Just brilliant. I I, I just, I'm, I'm very impressed with your, with your work and with your contribution here. So there is much, much to be explored and contemplated here. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. I'm ex excited for the website as well. It's, uh, it's been long, a long time in making and, uh, yeah, <laughs> I hope everyone likes it. Wonderful, really, really well done. So in terms of your uh, services, what type of uh, sessions can client book, clients book? So there's this birth chart reading, general readings, transit reading. Can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, so with the birth chart reading, they'll get like a detailed overview of their life purpose, their timelines, um, because in Vedic astrology, you do form, um, do follow the Dasha system as well. So, you know, you can get timelines up to, to the point of, of you leaving even the planet. So, um, and they'll get that and um, a, a really detailed understanding of their life purpose, which I, I want to highlight because most people are not quite aware of the direction they're taking in life so i highly recommend a birth chart reading and then after that for the general reading they can bring up any topic really it doesn't just have to be relationships career health it's really any topic they want to talk about and yeah we go into details about what's what the dynamics are and how they're playing out for the client and um, of course timelines that are relevant to that specific topic as well and we also talk about challenges and sort of like energetic solutions that we can use to sort of get get through the challenges. And we do that with the birth chart as well. 
And with the transit, uh, it's a little bit of a unique one because um, we not only talk about the transit, we also talk about astrocartography. We also talk about manifestations um, using the transit of the moon and specific planets that are related to the challenge that they're facing um, and really pinpoint and hone down on specific events that they want to manifest in their lives and good time specific um sort of timings for that so highly recommend it if you want to you know start a business or um i don't know thinking about getting married and want to really nail down that time <laughs> timing um we can we can talk about that and work on those as well That's or even relocating really yeah, yeah because astrocartography uh, would pinpoint sort of places where are uh, energetically more suitable for you to really thrive on this planet Yes, it can be so, so powerful. Um, so much clarity and guidance and just reassurance even to uh, just trust the inner guidance because oftentimes we actually are getting the nudges from within our own being about what the next step should be. But there's always this ever-present doubt that our human mind <laughs> keeps creating. So having an um, experience like this can absolutely uh, be transformational and just give us bring the wind into our sails, right? There is... Um, there is one more star in your chart that, uh, you know, I was curious about your Pluto in our galactic astrology uh, calculator, that which is used for generating this chart. Um, the Pluto is not showing any star, but I'm always curious about, you know, what, what else is there? <laughs> and in, sh uh, in fact, your Pluto is conjunct star called Zubin Shabali in... Um, Libra constellation and it is associated by ancient astrologers with uh, psychic abilities um, reaching high status um, and just deep love and passion for for knowledge and deep wisdom so I think that's also another wonderful omen for you and blessing from the sky and the fact that your Pluto in Libra is sitting in the ninth house house of um, you know embodiment of of the teacher uh, for others, bringing higher wisdom, higher guidance, and certainly your own unique astrology flavor, the Sophia astrology. Um, I just thought, you know, let's mention that too. I'm not sure if you've realized. Yeah. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. All right. Um, so actually, before we go back to to you, I would like to, you know, we don't get to talk about Vedic astrology often enough in our in our podcast, I would like to uh, clear up maybe some confusion that may be uh, present on YouTube and any of the social medias. I've noticed several novice astrology uh, astrologers making YouTube videos talking about galactic astrology. Um, those that I came across, they didn't study uh, the, the online courses uh, with me. And they would say that your tropical natal chart will have different stars than the Vedic natal chart. And that's simply not true. When calculated correctly, the stars should be exactly the same in your in your tropical zodiac and Vedic zodiac, if calculated correctly. When I created the Galactic Astrology 101 course based on my research in tropical zodiac, I took the procession of stars into consideration. So our calculator is... Um, you know, when used correctly, you will get exactly the same star. So in case you was you were one of those people that, uh, you know, happened to come across that information and you're kind of confused about different stars and two different charts, just scratch that information all together and just know that what you get in our galacticastrochart.com software is the accurate uh, information. And those are the stars that are aligned to your uh, to the natal planets when you were born. So... I just hope somebody needed to hear this. <laughs> All right. Okay, so yeah, um, I would um, love really useful. Yeah. yeah, I would love to hear a little more from your experience, maybe in the, in Himalayas. And is, is there anything that expanded your consciousness the most in terms of your travels and connecting to your roots and things like that? Is there any story that would stand out for you? Yeah, yeah. it's interesting that you bring that up because um, right now I'm going through my K2 dasha, the K2 period. And um, my K2, the which is a south node, node, is actually in Gemini. Connected with the lunar. Yeah, the lunar right, node. The, the it's actually, 
and mine sitting in Gemini, which is, you know, communication, technology and all of that. So I felt like the South Node is supposed to be a very spiritual period in a person's life when they're going through that um, seven year cycle. And I thought it was going to be very, very spiritually oriented and things like that. But I kept getting doses of technology coming my way uh, in ways that I had never thought. So I became more um, integrated. My, my business practice became more integrated with, um, um, you know, it, more knowledge about AI and uh, cryptos and all of those things. And I was like, OK, so, you know, I might I might do something different here and give you like a quick example of um how the internet the invention of the internet um in our world and then how that is going to progress into ai if um if you'd be happy for me to talk about uh, a little example yes and i'm so glad you're mentioning that and of course with a strong aquarius strong leo in your chart it's uh, so fitting that you're helping us to kind of integrate uh, how we work with AI and how we view it. So uh, this first chart, this one is showing the World Wide Web creation, right? That's the galactic astrology of the World Wide Web. But would you like me to first show the Vedic uh, charts for this? Uh, yes, please. The Vedic chart. Okay. So this one, yeah. All right. So this is the World Wide Web um, Vedic astrology chart with a lot of data that I look forward to <laughs> for your delineation of this. Tell us more. Okay, so this is a chart of the invention of the World Wide Web by Tim Berners-Lee, which was documented on the 12th of March, 1989. And um, so the reason I chose this chart is because it is said that the best predictor of, of future behavior is sometimes past behavior. So I found this very relevant in the term, in, you know, in the times of AI. So I might study how the internet started and where it's where it's headed. Um, yeah, so looking at the main chart on that screen, it would say birth chart, but it's actually the D1 chart. It's also known as the chart of your karma on this planet, which means your physical life. And it's got a Gemini ascendant, which is all about data, information, communication. The second most important chart to the right is the D9 chart or the Navamsha chart. It is also known as the chart of your dharma. And it's got an Aquarius ascendant with Jupiter on it, um, which is all about revolutionary spaces for communities and technology. I mean, that's just scratching the surface. But with these alignments, they confirm to me that I've got at least the correct event time for this, which is always good. So next, what I do is I'd examine the major timelines. So underneath that, you'll see the dashes, um, timelines of the Internet's progression over the years. Um, and it's called the Dasha system in Vedic astrology. So we, for the internet, we are currently in the major cycle of the North Node, which is also Rahu, and um, which is conjunct Mercury in the main chart, which is the ruler of the Ascendant. Mm. And in 2027, we'll enter the Jupiter period. So in mm. the main chart, Jupiter's in the 12th house in Taurus, while in the Navamsha chart and D9, it is literally sitting on the ascendant. So from these placements, the snapshot that I get straight away, we can tell several things. So first, it's likely that the internet and AI might not be distinguishable at all. They might become the same thing. Um, second is we might see a decentralized finance becoming increasingly mainstream, even with people who don't actually follow it now. And third, we could even be looking at a completely decentralized internet altogether. So now that I've got the snapshot of that ready, to decode the specific ways these changes might unfold, I turn to the divisional charts. Um, so for example, if I was looking, if I wanted to understand finance more closely in relation to AI, We'd examine the D1 chart, the D9 chart, and then there's something called the D10 chart, which we look at, you know, what, what the vocation of this um, internet will be in the physical reality. So pause. Um, Julia, if you could bring up the divisional chart. Okay. Can you see the change now with the new chart? That yep. I've yep. 
Okay, so I just want to also point out that there's actually a chart for every house in Vedic astrology. Um, it can go into very, very in-depth details as to how the transits are playing out specifically for that house as well. And it, there's also oh, okay. charts for people's lives. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's very microscopic, very quantum. It, we can go on and on. Yeah. So, yeah, so just for these three charts here, so I, I thought I might keep it short just for the purpose of this um, example with these three charts here, I can tell that massive amounts of wealth would be generated as a result of this decentralization first, which will give people more autonomy and lead to greater personal freedoms. But as you can see here, the two most important div divisional charts for this one, there's the D9 and the D10, are ruled by Aquarius, and the other one is ruled by Scorpio. Now, in Vedic astrology, the North Node, North Node rules Aquarius and the South Node rules Scorpio. So this screams to me, revolution and human evolution are very tightly linked with the progression of AI in our, in our physical world, which also translates to turbulence. And Oz, Julia, if you could um, bring up the galactic chart now. So I would like to talk a little bit about that. Can you see that now? Um, so it would be the PDF that I sent. Yeah, so this is one. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so with the galactic chart, <laughs> I know I said there'll be turbulence, but it's not about it's not all about constant transformation. There is light at the end of the tunnel, and this is where galactic astrology really ties it all together. So in Vedic astrology, these are the nakshatras or the 27 lunar mansions, which gives us a microscopic view of the sky. So we'll start here with the sun, the moon, and the ascendant are all lined up with Makab, Algol, and Sirius B. Now we know that these are some of <laughs> the more difficult stars in the night sky, which explains why the internet shook up our world so dramatically in just a matter of two decades. Now, here's the fun bit. Looking at the South and North nodes, we're heading towards the fixed royal star consciousness of former Hout, which means we'll be using technology for the advancement of our own consciousness, which is always exciting. And so when we go back a little bit, we rewind and look at the origin, we'll be seeing Pluto, Neptune and Uranus, um, which, is, which, are, which is the origin of our event in history. It's telling me that we're in for a bit of a rocky ride, like I mentioned in the beginning, but we'll settle into lasting peace in the end. Mm -hmm. And the best part about this is that Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus and Mercury all of these are our allies here, and they're conjunct with fixed stars associated with benevolent beings like the Pleiadians, the Syrians, and the Larans. So these beings have been helping humanity evolve for ages. So even though things might rise into conflict at first, we've got some stellar support to guide us through this transformation. And as AI evolves more and more to mimic humanity, it will likely trigger sort of a profound shift in our society, which means that this technological advancement may lead to sort of like privacy concerns and increased governmental control through centralized systems. And we're well aware that we're facing an era of social isolation and loneliness already. And the governments may try to exploit and gain control using that Um as, as a foundation, but in response to these challenges, humanity may be forced to evolve, developing higher states of consciousness, like, you know, like all the tellies of heightened communication, for example, telepathy, telekinesis, teleportation, as well as a, you know, like a deep and sense of love for all creatures in the universe. Essentially, the very issues that would create that were created by AI might actually serve as a catalyst for our own spiritual growth. So exciting, exciting times are ahead. I'd like to end on a positive note there. <laughs> yes, this is absolutely brilliant. Sophia, thank you so much for bringing that in. And just for clarity, again, this is a Vedic uh, galactic astrology chart for World Wide Web uh, when it was created. And I it just brings me so much hope and gratitude and excitement for 
divine synchronicity and all that and uh, the impact this has on, on humanity and uh, how wonderful to hear about some of the um, future transits and um, the impact of that on the collective. Thank you. This is such a gift. So, so good. Um, oh, thank you, Julia. Thank you. This has been amazing. Thanks for letting me share and um, share my excitement and completely nerding out about Vedic astrology as well. <laughs> yes, it's it's really quantum and never ending and the potential of it. It's uh, wow. Yay. <laughs> So I'm, I'm sure there'll be uh, more enthusiasts that'll be drawn to you and drawn to your frequency and to your wisdom and to your um, beautiful, beautiful heart and soul that you are pouring into your your website, your business, your creations. And I hope the blessings of the stars and the planets uh, that uh, we see in your chart will continue to support your journey and those that will be divinely guided to you. Is there anything else that you would like to share anything i didn't ask and i could have asked no just that um i would love for all of anyone listening to this to check out my website there's a lot of great content including my blog which i will update regularly as well and my social media would be launching soon as well uh so i'm, I'm planning on youtube instagram and facebook and um, it's still in the process of building, but uh, stay tuned for that one. And um, yeah, I am taking clients full time now via my website. So I'd love to connect with everyone there. And yeah, just say welcome to everyone who's interested. Beautiful. I feel um, further excitement and hope when I realize that there must be an entire generation of individuals that were born on Venus Jupiter conjunction, um, conjunct Regulus, conjunct Alphard uh, Hydra, and the magic that is going to be birthed through these individuals as they are becoming activated now and going forward. And um, wow, we are so blessed, we are so supported. I'm just, what a time to be alive, really. So I believe we are supported. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Well, congratulations once again to becoming one of our certified quantum soul guidance practitioners, Sophia. Really well done. And um, thank you all for watching. We'll see you again in the next podcast. Much love. Take care.